everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics, and this is the Gymtech One Multi-Cal Suppressor. As the suppressor market grows, the de the uh, the appeal and I guess the demand for multi-caliber uh, suppressors seems to be growing. Uh, technically, a lot of a lot of suppressors are multi-caliber because you take the largest caliber and you can scale down from there as long as there's aftermarket parts or mounts to support it. Uh, but now you're seeing a lot more companies market their cans as multi-cal. Uh, the Gymtech One has been out for uh, over a year, uh, so it's not exactly a new product to the market. But I'd never really spent any time with it, so. Um, having really good success with my last two Gym Tech cans, uh, the Tracker and the GM9, I decided that uh, I wanted to take a look at the Gym Tech one to see if it set itself apart. So the other rifle-centric cans that are out there that are multi-cal, that do support multi -ca multiple calibers. The Gym Tech one, uh, as far as Gym Tech is concerned, they definitely set themselves apart in what they said, well, this is how many calibers uh, our Gym Tech one supports. Um, most companies say, hey, you know, we support the 5.56 and the 308 and 762 by 39 and, and your, your 5.45 or, or your, just those, those more common calibers that you're going to encounter. Whereas Gym Tech 1 is like, no, this is exactly, uh, as you're seeing now, how many different calibers are supported by the Gym Tech 1. Now, that being said, it is still pretty uh, uh, centric to your, your standard, your more venerable, your more common uh, calibers such as 5.56, 300 Blackout, 308 Winchester, so on and so forth. But uh, as a multi-caliber platform, are you going to give anything up to gain one can that you can use on multiple platforms? When it comes to the multi-caliber platform, um, your, your extreme diameter has to be able to support the, multi, the, the largest caliber that, that uh, you're going to offer the can for. In this case, uh, your, your 30 caliber diameter, such as your 338, your 308, your 762 by 39, your 300 blackout, all roughly in that same neighborhood. So usually the biggest concern of people buying a multi-cal can, or one of the hesitations for buying a multi-cal can, is those cans historically um, have not offered the greatest sound attenuation versus a can specifically for that caliber. Uh, Ten years ago, if you were to buy, it, if you were to take a 30 cal can and put it on a 5.56, it wasn't going to sound that good. Yeah, it was going to get the job done, but the decibel reduction wasn't going to be as good, in my experience, as a can that was purpose built for that caliber. Uh, that doesn't seem to be the case anymore, um, especially with my experience just going through the just shooting the Gym Tech One. One of the things I noticed was the going from 5.56 to 308. I didn't. Uh, feel like that I was I was um, comparative to other cans for that same caliber that I was gaining or really losing anything it's felt like okay this can is purpose-built for this round even though shooting 556 through a 30 caliber uh, diameter can in the past had not sounded I guess as good um, obviously that's very subjective and I get that but I think most people with, with experience with suppressors know exactly what I'm talking about uh, they just didn't sound as good that's not the experience I had with the Gym Tech One at all. So getting right into the specs of the One, uh, it is a quick detach, but it does come with a direct thread op option. Um, if you're going to shoot it on such as a, a 308, it came with a direct thread 308, which I'll get to. For my review process, I fired it on a 12 inch uh, American Defense Manufacturing upper. I also used a 16 inch PWS uh, Mark 116 Mod 1 and a Remington 700. Uh, as far as the can itself goes, you've got 7.5 inches in length, uh, 1.6 inches in diameter, 16 ounce weight. Pretty light can, and that's because it's made of titanium and inconel, which are two of my favorite materials for suppressors. Uh, just based on hearing attenuation, the reduction of weight, and the, the overall lifespan and durability of the can itself. It is full auto rated, and while for the review process I didn't have select fire capability, I definitely punished the shit out of this thing, which you're going to see in the review. Once I got the Gym Tech 1 mounted on the first rifle on the 12-inch uh, the uh, American Defense Manufacturing Upper, it's got a Novesky lower, uh, I wanted to do the burn down right out of the right out of the gate, so to speak. Now, for those of you not familiar, any kind of firearm-centric review I do on anything such as a suppressor, a barrel, or a firearm in general, 
uh, I'm going to do a 500 round burn down. And the 500 round burn down is just 500 rounds as fast as I can actually shoot them uh, to see if the device, in this case, the Gym Tech One, is gonna be able to hold up to the abuse that I'm gonna put it through. Yeah, they say it's full auto rated. And again, this test wasn't full auto um, uh, because I don't have a select fire lower. Or I didn't have a select fire lower available for this particular review. But I did also, you know, did want to put that 500 rounds through there as fast as I could. So this is taking a look at the burn down. See if we can't set the range on fire. Got a little fire, got a little flame. Well, despite actually setting the can on fire, uh, it successfully passed. And, and that's what I expected. I mean, if a company's going to say, yes, our can is full auto rated, and I've had experience with Gym Techs in the past on select fire weapons, and they'd held up just fine, that was never really any doubt. But I still wanted to, for my own edification, and for you know, for those of you that are watching this video who are going to spend your hard-earned dollars on, a, on the, potentially on this can, I wanted you to know that if you were going to put 500 rounds of ammunition through this can in a very short period of time, not only is it going to be able to take the abuse, you're not going to have a baffle strike or blowout or anything like that, but it's going to maintain the hearing attenuation from start to finish, the decibel reduction, from start to finish, of what you, that you want. The next big question on most people's minds when it comes to cans, especially those that are quick to attach or quick attach cans, is point of aim, point of impact. Is the can going to retain point of aim, point of impact, or is there going to be a significant difference between suppressed and unsuppressed? Uh, the Gym Tech mounting system is rock solid. Uh, it's got these opposing size master lugs, so you can only put the can on in one direction. Uh, what that means is if I mount it this way and the, the large lug is up top, I can never actually mount it the other direction. So the can is going to maintain that centricity with the, uh, the muzzle device itself as close to as possible during mounting and unmounting or repeated mounting, especially if you've got one can and you're moving it from caliber to caliber to caliber to caliber, when you bring it back to that gun, is it going to be able to retain that zero? Um, Another concern, and the concern that I'm going to show you right now is, is the can going to can create a significant problem with the Zero itself? So, uh, went ahead and put it on my 16-inch PWS, and uh, using 55 grain match prime, I shot a five-round group unsuppressed. <laughs> Then I went ahead and put the can on. Now keep in mind, the gun is zeroed without the suppressor. So here it is adding the Gym Tech 1 shooting 55 grain match grade prime ammunition. And let's see if the Gym Tech 1 causes any significant shift in zero.
I'm certainly happy with that group. I'm certainly happy with that minimal shift. Um, it's one of, I guess, one of the uh, the least extreme shifts I've seen with this quote unquote so-called quick attach cans. Uh, me, my personal feeling is if you're gonna put a can on a gun, leave it on, um, or at least bring it back to the same gun that it's zeroed on. Uh, but as far as, as uh, the point of aim, point of amp tech shift from suppressed to unsuppressed return to zero, um, I, I'm very happy with the performance out of the Gym Tech 1 on that caliber. Uh, I didn't, I don't feel like I would have to have any undue concern if I was like, okay, is it going to be able to, am I going to be able to do the work that I need to do going from suppressed to unsuppressed or unsuppressed to suppressed? Is it going to maintain uh, that zero within the neighborhood that I needed to be in based on the kind of shooting that I do? Even for long range applications, that shift wasn't significant and it's repeatable. Uh, throughout the review process, especially when I had for the time that I had it on the 16-inch gun, um, it was consistently uh, that minimal of shift in that direction in that place. So I feel like it's reliable, and knowing that it's reliable, if I have to, I can hold over or dope for it. Next big top of conversation is actual hearing reduction. How good is the sound in the Gym Tech One? Now, again, given the fact that you're you're watching this on YouTube. Um, the audio quality isn't true to life. That's just something that we have to accept. But loud is loud, quiet is quiet. I think you get an idea for it. Um, not shooting subsonic ammunition, you're always gonna have that supersonic crack. I don't care about that, just this is me personally. Uh, I only want cans to make firearms hearing safe in the environments that I'm going to use them in. I don't need them to make them super, super quiet. If I can get that, that's great. But subsonic ammunition of a rifle has never been a really big desire for me just based on what I'm giving up compared to what I'm gaining. So I just want a can to act as hearing suppression. That's all I need it for. I need that, that safe hearing level. Uh, using the the Gym Tech outdoors, not a big deal at all. Um, from the 5.56 and a 12 inch to the 5.56 and a 16 inch to 308 bolt gun, 20 inch gun, no problems at all outdoors, obviously. But what about indoors? Uh, one thing that I wanted to do is, and one thing I do with every suppressor that I do a review on, or every suppressor that I buy for my own personal use, is I need to know that that suppressor is going to be hearing safe in confined spaces. So I go ahead and I shoot it inside, uh, just the 12 inch right here. So that was on the 12 inch uh, American Defense Manufacturing UIC. Uh, I think you can see, um, again, the sound isn't, you're, obviously I can't say this is the sound because you're, you're watching a video and the sound isn't gonna be quite the same as it would in real life. I can tell you hearing attenuation, um, uh, sound reduction was great even in those confined spaces. Now on the 12 inch gun, obviously uh, more common, that's going to be the more abusive, more concussive, um, louder, uh, of, of the, the barrel lengths that you can suppress. But on the 16 inch, same thing, uh, shooting it indoors. Um, well, I'll go ahead and show you right now, just shooting the, uh, the 16 inch indoors, kind of the same thing. In fact, the hearing obviously was just a little bit better because we have a 16 inch barrel length versus a 12 inch barrel length. And finally, for those of you that are going to shoot the larger calibers, put it on a uh, Remington 700 20-inch barrel, of course. Uh, it is a bolt gun, um, but most people in the 308 caliber don't go too much shorter than that. But the 7.5-inch can on a 20-inch barrel shooting 169-grain Hornaday match. Uh, from an indoor, it, it you know I've had cans that were uh, longer, beefier, thicker, whatever you want to call it, who, that didn't, reduce, didn't have the same degree of... Uh, uh, hearing suppression that the Gym Tech one offered me in those confined spaces indoors. Now granted I am shooting out of the building. Um, if it was a completely enclosed button up building it would probably be a little bit significantly different or from significantly to slightly depending on the caliber and the barrel length. Um, but I'm definitely happy with the performance of the Gym Tech one and I would consider it to be very very usable in confined spaces. Is the juice worth the squeeze? Is the Gym Tech One everything it's cracked up to be? It's been on the market for a while, so not just my review, but there's plenty of other reviews out there about the Gym Tech One, so you can kind of gauge from yourself, not just from my personal experience, but from those uh, those other people who've taken a look at this presser as well. Um, some people have had it for a lot longer, so they may have, you know, you may be able to get an update on how they feel about it a year later, or six months later, and so on and so forth. Uh, from my personal experience, this is an awesome can. Uh, the fact that it supports so many calibers and it does that support so well uh, across again I'm kind of boring when it comes to calibers I only shoot three calibers I shoot 308 I shoot 556223 and I shoot nine millimeter um, so 
I'm not really a gun collector, so I'm not the guy who's going to be able to take the Gym Tech 1 and put it on 19 different platforms to just get a feel for it. But based on the popular calibers and the calibers that I do use, uh, I think that this is uh, its a great can. It's a well-built can. Uh, and it gives you really good uh, sound suppression across those the calibers that I was able to shoot it on and the barrel lengths that I was able to shoot it on. Uh, so it's definitely something I'm going to continue to use. You know, the point aim, point of impact was could mean negligible based on what I was doing. Um, so again, I'm not going to have too many big concerns about it being a quick attach can. Um, as far as cost goes, it's a re it's a reasonably priced can, especially for one that's made out of titanium and inconel that weighs in at just at 16 ounces um, with a 7.5 inch length. You know, it's just over 1.6 inches in diameter. So for those of you that want to put it under a rail, I'm sure you can find a rail out there to get you that sexy look you're going for. Um, all things considered, if someone was going to ask me, hey, what do you think about the Gym Tech 1? I'm thinking about getting one. I'd be like, yeah, go ahead and pick one up. It's a great can. Uh, it does exactly what it's supposed to do uh, at a price that's pretty reasonable. Um, we're getting into a time in our lives where we may see suppressors be uh, just as difficult, or I should say as easy, depending on how you look at it, to buy as a firearm. You just fill out a 4473 and you go home with it. Personally, I don't necessarily even agree with that. I think that you should be able to just you know, buy it like you would a muzzle device. Um, but I'll take what I can get. So as suppressors become more and more market friendly and more and more easier to access for every single person in the country, or hopefully every single person in the country, um, the Gym Tech 1 is going to continue to stand there as a venerable can that gives you multi-cal ability. You know, if you just can't budget five or six cans, multi-cal is going to be the way to go. And the Gym Tech 1 should definitely be on your short list of cans to uh, consider. I'm Aaron Cowan with Stage Dynamics. Suppress accordingly.